Knowing this wrist hinge secret will transform your swing. The hands are the one point of connection with the club, so we need to ensure our wrists are moving in the correct way. So many players get this wrong, so in this video, you'll learn the best way to move them so you can level up your ball striking. Let's get stuck in. Okay, Riggsy, let's talk about the wrists in the takeaway and how they should work to create this classical tour pro position that you see by this stage, which essentially then sets up the rest of the swing to work in harmony. Yeah. We see there is a difference between players and how they move their right wrist and their left wrist. Of course. And Absolutely. the effects that that would have on the shaft. Yeah. So let's talk about one of the most common errors that you see with the player. And we were talking about it before the video started about players that use their left wrist for the right hander too much. Yes. Well, if we take a look at where that left hand is on the golf club, if we're gonna create a, a neutral left hand grip, we already have extension in this wrist. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's the misconception of what a hinge actually needs to feel like, yeah. but a lot of golfers, as they start working into their backswing, they do all of the work with that left wrist. And as you can see, if we hinge aggressively okay, and extend that left wrist in the backswing, what we're going to do is we're going to see that club face gets a lot more open. Oh, yeah. And there, there are some shots in golf where we want this, but okay. sir, you know, flushing a seven iron is not one of them. Yeah, certainly. So this would be a, a, a great position to be in guys for uh, a lob shot, a bunker shot, because you're going to keep the face open. You can use the bounce. Yes. But if you're trying to go for distance, definitely not the way to go about it. So from address, we would see that this player would almost just use from this position of extension of this cupping that we're going to see from the face on. And they just, as a way of keeping the club light, they almost maintain it too much. And that keeps the face open. Yes. So how do we rectify this? We need to learn how to extend the trail wrist. Mm. Okay. I think that it's, it is this concept of where the hinge needs to come from. Now, to make the golf club go up, we will need to add some extension. Yeah. If we do all of it in that lead wrist, well, the face is just going to open up more. Yeah. So we need to learn to feel more of that with our trail wrist. If we start to work back and we get more extension through here, this keeps the strength of the face where we need it, such that we won't need to flip the club at the bottom. Yeah. And as we can see, guys, the effect of these wrist angles position can greatly influence the club face orientation. So it is so important. And if I use what Riggs was talking about before this in the model that we're working on fixing here, and I just keep that cup too much, you see how the face and the toe is pointing up to the sky even past that point. And if I was to actually just rehearse this now with my backhand, ensuring that I'm creating that cupping, that extension of the back wrist with the right hand first, and then I actually place my left hand on, what do we see with the lead hand there, Riggs? Well, it's in a lot more of a neutral position. Mm. So it's gone from that extension or cup at address. And as we've extended through the trail wrist, the lead wrist has neutralized. Yeah, big time. And there is a wide range of movements that these wrists do work throughout the golf swing. But what we do see is the right wrist would tend to move in more of this backwards orientation throughout the swing uh, rather than an upwards. Yes. Okay. And a lot of players, as they swing the golf club, would tend to move this lead wrist upwards and not on a 45 degree angle exactly. about what exactly. they should be working. But the checkpoint really at the end of the day from both face on and down the, the line rigs, what do we got here? From the face on, what should we see with the checkpoint of the wrists? What I'd love to see is when the hands are just in front of that trail leg, that the club shaft is around parallel to the ground. This is a great indication that we have added in the right balance of pivot or body rotation with that load into the wrists. Yeah, perfect. And from here, if I just take my left hand off the golf club and I keep my right on, you can see it's supported nicely. Yes. Once again, place it back on. If I take my right off, that might feel very different to you guys. You might be so used to seeing the logo or the glove staring up from you, but it's actually in a more supported position. Yes. But it's just gonna take slow, thoughtful reps to be able to groove this sensation in of achieving this very structured traditional look. Now, from there, the right wrist might feel like it's a little bit more cupped as we swing it back. Yep. But let's say we take this exact same position into impact rigs. 
Well, that's exactly where we're going to see all the best players in the world. Exactly. We're never going to see this cupping taken into impact because that's going to be scooping. Exactly right. So would you say that's a great little drill in itself, like swinging halfway back, stopping, checking the face, right wrist is uh, hinged back and then just trying to hit little shots down there? Without question. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a great one for building awareness of club face control, what compression, a really low, powerful shot for such a small swing as well is going to make yes. a big difference. Yeah, for sure. For those of you using a mirror, which is one of the best forms of feedback, as you work through that, if you do that again, when we load the trail wrist the way that we'd like to, we're going to see that that leading edge is going to be on a very similar angle to your torso. Yeah, for sure. Great checkpoint from down the line, guys. And just from a visual here, you're going to be able to see that your lead wrist there is relatively flat and my right wrist is going to be slightly hinged back from this point. Then we push our body towards the target. This follows in nicely from our little extension video Correct. that we did. I'm going to have one more little practice swing of that, mate. Get the feeling of it. Put it into a full shot. Last shot of the day. Let's make this a ripper. Felt pretty loaded. Beautiful off the club face, mate. All right, John. Cheers.